With one concept that we're doing, a kid might be an auditorial learner. The next time we do something, he might get it better or she might get it better from a visual perspective, you, you see. And sometimes they do both. So some will listen to the, the, the novel and then they will follow along in the book because they need both. They got to see it, the visual, and they got to hear it or whatever. And of course, uh, there's a lot of history that we bring in with that, with the Great Depression and all this kind of thing or whatever, just lead them to a little bit of uh, research that they have to do or whatever, but it all ties together. We are basically going over the novella of Mice of Men. We've been watch, um, excuse me, uh, watching and reading the book. So in the book, I'm pretty sure we just finished chapter four. And basically, um, we are analyzing, getting the definitions, and writing essays on each chapter. And what I want you to be thinking about now, I have a list of culminating activities that you can choose from to actually show me now that you really have gotten what I wanted you to get, all right? So this, this is what the, what, what the deal is. You are going to create your own test and your own rubric. You're gonna create that yourself, okay? Now, Ms. Thompson and I are gonna help you do that, but that's what you're going to do for this chapter. Then that way, you guys will be able to see what we do when we give you a test. And you know, I, I really don't like to give tests or whatever, because I like projects because uh, to me, I feel like I can get your best when you show me how you can give back to me what I've given you in the way that you can do it best. Today we're reading Mice of Men. We're basically going back and we're analyzing the chapters. We're discussing the character details and <clears throat> learning how to take parts out and then put them into question. So I would give the kids a quote every morning that they have to relate to. They have to say what they think he means. They have to say whether or not they agree or disagree with that. Then they have to connect themselves with it in some form or fashion. But in the process of that, even in, a, in addressing that, they have to use the two types of writing strategies that we're using right now, which is praisey and race. So they have to use one of those, whichever one that they feel most comfortable with, with the a quote that they're dealing with at that time. So you got your restating, you got your answer, you got your citing, but in that citing, it's always done in parathetical documentation. That should be seen within your paper. So what you wanna do? You're gonna do your page number, paragraph number, line number, but I want it in parentheses behind the information that you use as your text. Are y'all with me? Okay, so the auditor learner, I am able to paint a picture to graph the, um, the thing that I'm learning. And then for a kinesthetic, I have to be able to read it before I can get a better interpretation or a, a better meaning of it for me to be able to answer the questions about the project, which the project is I'm doing, we're reading the a novella of Mice and Men, and we have to, what she's trying to do is for us to be able to read and try to and get the answers from the book. Formative assessments are so very, very important with a group such as this. You, you gotta constantly pull in little, little ideas, little, little snippets of things to inform you as to whether or not these kids are getting what they're getting, because you can't go on until they actually get it. So with them writing for me in their own words, using those different uh, constructive response, the praise or whatever, which are writing um, strategies, that lets me know whether or not my students are getting it in the manner that they should be getting it if they are indeed this type of learner.